Yes, 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 Rastafari. Yes, I, Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Rastafari. Hey, hey, hey. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari, LOJ, Line of Judah Society, right here, here, here. Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated as well. I'm a member as well as the officer. So let's first of all just address this right here. This doesn't have to do with that, but just to introduce I and I. So right here, this is Yadin right here. So just let's weigh in on this particular matter. I don't know if you're too familiar with it, but it's been coming across the different um, Rasta and Rastafari kind of news related, you know, coming out of Jamaica regarding Scott's Pass, a place called Scott's Pass. And a well-known Nyabingi, we said Nyabingi gathering ground and place and also this, this land was given, it's said to have been given by Burhana Salase, a.k.a. Robert Nesta Marley, better known as Bob Marley, to the Rastafari, because Rastafari, very, very important to our brother, Burhana Salase. Now, not to get into those details too much more right here, there's a lot of details. We're also catching up on, you know, different information regarding this, because we're trying to really find out like what's really going on here we've heard about it before regarding i think sizzla sizzla kalanji either was made um uh president or nominated or elected or something about him and the naya bingi order look a while ago also that he had helped out assisted gave, given some money so forth and so on but not to get into even that right there but this is related to the same place scott's past many well-known Nyabingi and well attended gatherings over the years. It's a historical, we can say it's, it's a historical site, like a landmark, we can say. Now, the link, well, we mentioned first of all that Bob Marley is the one who gave the land, according to all the reports that we have heard from members of the, the body, we could say the corporate body of Rastafari. When we say body, we're speaking about body in the, in the metaphorical, metaphysical sense. You know what I mean? We all are like one man and Kadamawi Hala Selassie is I and I head, right? He is the Ras. In other words, the Rastafari. Some talk about the first Rasta or this Rasta, that Rasta, maybe. That's abbreviation. That's, that's something that's more like for the world consumption coming out from us to the world but truly we are rastafari the fullness of the name rastafari and the first rastafari is kadamawi hala selassie hala selassie the first right so he's the head the head of the body as we say like the church right theocratically speaking right the church right the church the church is as the body Right, the body, the bride, and the Messiah, even the black Messiah, the King of Kings, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David is our head. All right, so just in getting that perspective right there, most of the I them know this nothing new, but just to put the context on what we're saying right here regarding this particular land and trying to assess what has been going on. So I mentioned a couple of the things such, such as um some of the well-known gatherings over the years. I think more to more Plano and other elders, um, they have been, um, we could say, laid to rest, their bodies, we could say, laid to rest there as they have gone on. So we have that site there as Rastafari worldwide, you know, internationally, but in particular at, we could say, the roots of the lighthouse, Jamaica, Ben Jaman, Jaman becoming that lighthouse of Rastafari. So the lightning from the east, right, from Ethiopia to the west, over here in the west, the Americas and the Caribbean. And then we have the light keeping shining and burning, we could say, from the Isle of Jamaica and the Nyabingi, right, the Ayabingi, the Nyabingi order, the theocratic government, right, that being at its very roots. Most of I and I will acknowledge that, or should acknowledge that as Rastafari, first and foremost. Okay, so what's the situ situation right here? I know I just kind of just went through that, just just a basic overview for some of the ones and ones who might not be as familiar why this is important. Now, why do we have Burhana Selassie and Rita Marley? Well, it's it's said, and we was watching this right here, so let's just get to the main point, right? Scott's past, Rasta's given eviction notices. Now, we checked out the Cutting Edge, Muda Baruka's podcast. 
I think they'll consider Muda Baruka. His birthday was recently. Might consider him a Capricorn. I didn't know. Bro, you a Capricorn. Really? Are, are you? Yeah, yeah. It was just a couple of days ago. Yeah, the broadcast was the 29th. Yeah, I think a few days ago. So I think that's in the minds coming up on the on the 9th, right? Just for ones and ones, some already know. So forth and so on. As well, we have the 7th, you know, the 7th, well, literally the 6th of January, the 6th to the 7th of January for Lidet. So Melcom Lidet, you know, which is um, commemorating and remembering the birth, right, of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshia, according to Ethiopian Orthodox tribe and tradition, right there, 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 right? But that being that, we have this eviction note. So when we saw this right here, this is the first, the first of um, the Gregorian, right, the Gregorian New Year, <laughs> Pope Gregory New Year, even in the podcast or the broadcast cutting edge Muda Baruka even touched on that it was very very interesting I give thanks for checking it out you know um, as we said to some of I and I brethren before who wanted I and I to you know either you know comment or go in on some things that or points of view that Muda Baruka might bring forward and, and share we say well yes we might have certain um, certain um, uh, differences, intellectual, perhaps differences, you know what I mean? Um, as it were on certain things. So we understand, I think we get a good, a better understanding now that we see that Muta, Muta is a, as they call it, the Capricorn, right? The Capricorn vibes. <laughs> Interesting. Just noting that right there, that was a, a kind of um, a eye opener. We just see the other day and liked a couple of IGs where they were healing up Muta Baruch. And once I find that interesting because we have gone, you know, against some, some of his ideas on some things. Understandable, but, you know, the whole point, I think, is to reason. Come make a reason. Iron sharpen iron, right? To mature, to grow, to grow in grace and the, and the real knowledge, right? You know, of, of salvation, of saving I and ourselves from annihilation as the Federation Constitution and Bylaw so says. But here on the Scots Pass, the Scots Pass issue, the Scots Pass matter. Now a name came up, right? A name came up. Um, I think it's, uh, is her name Stephanie? Cause it wasn't taking notes. I think Stephanie, I think it was, uh, you know, we heard this, this is the one who's representing Rita Marley. Rita Marley is said to um, not be able to, according to what Muta Baruka mentioned, at the present, she's not able to speak and she's not able to walk. Um, I'm not too sure. My wife, um, Isha, Isha Shelley, me stay, she asked me, she said, um, she said, does she have a stroke? And I really don't know. I'm still catching up on a lot of this more recent news. Some of y'all might be informed and can hit up in the comments if you kind of know a little bit more concerning Rita not being able to speak and not being able to walk, as Muda Baruka mentioned on the Cutting Edge 29th, the last Cutting Edge uh, podcast or broadcast of 2021. Now, as we began to listen to it, and he also had um, uh, Ross Ivai, Ross Ivai, recall Ross Ivai when he visited, you know, the Ayabingi, the Nyabingi order up here, Halsey Street, back in the days on Halsey Street as he came forward here and a couple of other places. Also remember the Centenary in Ethiopia where they played, I think, the National Ethiopian National Theater, Nyabingi. Very, very, you know, um, well-known, well-involved um, Rastafari brother in Ray Theater, Ras Ivai. Got to meet the brother as well. He has a couple, I think, albums out there, some well-known Nyabingi albums. I mention that because he came on to reason with Muda Baruka and to try to answer some of the questions to catch us all up on what's going on. This historic landmark Rastafari Nyabingi order um, uh, site, you know, site location, um, real estate. This is what we're speaking about now. Real estate, you know, is is um, under the shadow of being taken away right, from the Rastafari community that had received it, right, from, originally from the word sound of, from the gift and the giving of Burhana Selassie, from, from the gift of Bar Marley. So it is said that Bar Marley, 
is the one who originally gifted this land to the Rastafari community, to the Rastafari community, Nyabingi theocratic order, to the Rastafari, to I and I people, right? In Scott's Pass. Then after Burhan Selassie, you know, after his martyrdom, you know, after the martyrdom of Burhan Selassie, one of I and I say one of the first early martyrs, right? Not the only one, but one of the martyrs of Rastafari, right? right? Of this way, truth and life and liberty. His wife, um, Rita Marley, she came into, you could say, the um, position to, I guess, manage his affairs, being his lawful, I guess it's a lawful wife, because, you know, legally married, not getting into but Hannah Selassie, Bob Marley, another brother in his personal matters, unless it comes before I and I to be adjudicated in some way, and it has not. I'm just stating this for the record, y'all, right? It's not to go into the whole story here. We'll be here for a very long time and trying to get to the main point that I'm trying to share. Please bear with me, brothers and sisters, and also others, right? Because I don't push, you know, the brother and sister on ones and ones, but those who are I and I brothers and sisters and others who are just ones who are subscribers, you know, and like to hear or share what we like to share, right, and what we bring forward to be heard. So here's the word on this right here. So we listen to Muda Baruka and Ross Ivan discuss the whole Scott's Pass situation and the Nyabingi order and this eviction, this, this eviction. Now, here's the title of it. This is this is the still. We try to zoom in because we necessarily don't want to just, you know, just use their still, but, you know, be a little bit original. But point to the particular podcast and broadcast. So if you haven't checked it out, especially the first hour, if you haven't checked it out, well, you can check it out again. So Muta right here. Let's let's do this like this. Let's do this like this, right? Zoom in right here. Yeah, that'll be a good still right there, won't it? So Muta, Muta right here. He's basically a Rastafari, almost like a journalist, so to speak, interviewer. So he provides his platform here for Ross Ivy to catch us all up and to speak to the audience on what's going on. And here's the thing: it seems like there's still more questions. There's more questions than answers this is a really interesting thing even regarding the eviction it seems as though this is what's going on i think it's stephanie i think it's stephanie i think it's her name uh, i think it begins for s i think it's stephanie I could ask my sister wife right now but she's another part you know of the gates right here so um it's another marley and then in one of the comments when i picked up on the name I asked my wife and she looked over and she said that actually some people in the comments were saying, well, she's not even really a Marley. Maybe she married in, maybe she's a, you know, a, 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 a daughter of someone, you know, like, you know how, you know how it is in family, so forth and so on. When one's, how they regard certain people, though they are kind of family, they're part of the Mispacha, right? But they're not really a part of the Beit Av. Now, I'm using some of the Hebrew terms, the mispacha, mispacha, or the mispaka, right? Mispacha is like the family circle, right? And it's a reason why I'm going to our Ethiopian, the royal order of Ethiopian Hebrews and some of the roots right here to make the main penultimate point. But the mispacha, right, the mispaka is like the family circle. And then you have the Beit Ab. Beit, Beit, Beit is house. And Ab is father. So the Beit Ab is like the house of the father. So in the ancient, ancient and African, Afro-Asiatic sense, what you would usually have in a family, you would have like the father, and then you would have like the mother or the main wife or like the queen mother, the main mother, the main woman. There might be other woman or wife. And so from from an African, Afro-Semitic, and even a biblical perspective. Right. So you have like the main descendants, right? The main descendants that come from that same father, and mother. Let's give us Abraham. Let's give Abraham, you know, a point about Abraham in the Bible, right? According to the King James, a translation you're familiar with, right? In the translation, right, you find that Abraham, his first child was Yishmael, was Ishmael, right? And Ishmael is a son of Abraham, but is not a son of Sarah. Right, of Sarah is a son of Hagar, right, and 
Abraham and Abraham, but not a son of Sarah and Abraham. So in that context, right, in that context, right, while being in the family before Sarah had told Abraham to cast out the woman and, and, and the bondwoman and her son, they would have been a part of the Beit Ab, the house of the father, right? The house of the father. Once they were kicked out of the house, so to speak, right? And they went ahead and then it says, the Bible says that Hagar, Ishmael's mother, got him a wife from Mitzrayim, from Mizraim, from Kemet, from Egypt. And then he started to have his children, so forth and so on, right? What we have there is now kind of, kind of like the Mispaka, right? The Mispaka, the family circle, right? A, a kind of a better example, I'm just trying to get an example to kind of have you understand the difference between, say, the Hebraic sense of family, family, and family by some relation. Those who are directly descended from the primary father, right? Patriarch and matriarch and matrix, right? will become part of the Beit Ab, right? Say if the wife, the woman had other children, those other children are adopted by her, her now husband, who is maybe the father of their children, right? But he's, he's part of the Ms. Pa the children are part of Ms. Paca, the family circle, but because they're not descendant, they're not of the seed of the, of the father, father. So I point that out because it's Stephanie whoever this Stephanie is, I think her name is Stephanie. Please correct me. Please forgive me if I'm misrecalling her name. I just heard it in the vid and I said, like, who's that? You know, I'm thinking, what is this next one? Or, don't really follow too much of the, you know, the Bob Marley's and the Marley's, um, the nowadays kind of melodrama, but because of its effect, right? Whether effectively or adversely, right? on the Rastafari and the Rastafari community and the perception of us, it's important for us to address it. Because if they say Rasta, Rastafari, and we say said way, then it affects us. And this is why we're taking this time to have a little say right here on this after checking out others, you know, having their respective perspective says on this particular matter. And there seem to be a lot of heat can we say a lot of heat, not smoke so much, but the fire that produces by the burning, the smoke, right? Um, on the Marleys, right? On the Bob Marley children, on the children, right? Or the ones who claim to be of, quote, the Marley name, the Marley name and the Marley fame. So when we heard that one of the, you know, commoners on the video said that, well, she's not even a part of the family, you know, so from so on. Now, she seems to be the one representing Rita, Rita Marley. It has been said that Rita Marley has given, you know, in the past at least, has given consent, um, testimony, witness that this land truly is the land for the Rastafari, the, the, the Nyabingi, the order, Nyabingi order, and the Rastafari of the Nyabingi order. This truly is their land. So, in other words, she's given kind of like what they call an oral like affirmation confirmation it's like i, I say something like i mean you talk and i say yeah yeah that's yours right and then you're telling other people yeah yeah yeah, that's yours but then it comes to a point where i cannot if i cannot speak or i cannot walk and i need somebody else to represent my interests like another family member or relation or relative or somebody with a name to represent you know the interests and then you say well well you said the land is my land and this is a long time ago and everything and maybe i did at that time, but have I suffered any physical, um, any physical situation? Like, I don't know what Rita's situation is, but like I said, Muda Baruka saying that she cannot speak, right, presently and cannot walk and being represented to, re represented by, I think, Stephanie, someone named Stephanie Marley, right, to the Rastafari community. Right. Because the next question is, is she Rastafari? Right? Because because you might be a, a descendant, whether of the Beit Av, right, or of the Mispaka, right, whether of the house of the father, direct descendants of Bar Marley and Rita Marley and, you know, or Bar Marley and his other woman, you could say wives in this sense. Right. Or if you just connect it with that family name by marriage or something else like that. Right? So you can see that the problem here seems to be the evidence, the witness, the paperwork. I mean, 
this is where it got so interesting in the conversation. It touched on the paperwork, the paperwork. Like, what's the evidence? Right? We have to deal with the paperwork. And I know as Rastafari, you know, and being overzealous, right? Being overzealous, maybe even being over, so-called overrighteous too, but being overzealous, many times we'll say, fire bun, fire bun, fire bun, paper, paper, the paper, paperwork, the papacy, papacy. I remember brother in say this and, this is a brother named Firm Selassie. I haven't heard from him or of him in a while. Some of y'all know him from the Nyabingi order up here, Firm Selassie. I think his name is Barry White, a.k.a. Barry White, Firm Selassie. That, um, Ross Firm, he said this one time in the Nyabingi order about phew, it was back in the 90s, right, here in, here in Broke Kings, Brooklyn, right, on Halsey Street. He said, um, he said Babylon is a papacy. That's why we have to have the paper works, right? The paper works. He was connecting the, the word sound of paper see and then having the papers to see, right? Having the papers to see, like having the document. If somebody says, is this car yours? I say, yeah. They say, how you get it? I say, how I went to the showroom and I spent money and I signed, you know, <coughs> you know how I got the car, right? And then you say, well, okay, confirm that with the paperwork. I said, just, you know, you could ask the, the guy at the showroom. You go, go to the showroom and ask him. You know, he knows that. You know that on the spot, whether in America or Jamaica or anywhere else within this world, you know, this world hasn't just come about so-called just yesterday. It's been around for a while. This system of things, we know how it goes. If I'm going to the airport, I'm going to travel somewhere, right? I need to have certain paperwork, right? Certain paperwork. Now, I was reason for brethren and some sisters too, I think some brothers and sisters, different ones individually about the same matter, that a lot of times because someone is Rastafari, yeah, I remember brother and probably if he's listening and watching this, he, he knows, right? <laughs> or those who we've spoken on this, you know what I'm about to say, but hear this. Um, that we take Rasta, like like if somebody's a Rastafari, we'll treat, like as a Rastafari, someone who professes to be a Rastafari, I will give them, I said this yet, yeah, the benefit of the doubt, right? Now, usually we don't speak this way, usually in a Rastafari, theocratic, you know, like within that, that holy space, we speak in a different language, but the reality of the language, the reality of the word is that you be giving somebody the benefit of the doubt. There's things, when I say doubt, there's things that I don't know, that I don't, I cannot confirm. Like, let me just give this one example here. Some brother in years ago, back in the 90s too, you know, back in those days doing runnings and other kind of things like that with two of my, you know, brethren and everything, went to next brethren, you know, to get a ting. And then we're on the way back to deal with the ting, right? And I'm in the back seat and we basically get pulled over, right, by some undercover um, refrigerator repairmen. That's how we used to refer to them. You know, some of the white boys wearing the lumberjack jackets, like, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, white boys, so to speak, right? They pulled us over, right, had us all got the car, Right. And what was interesting, we acknowledged that we had a little bit of herb like in the metorkosha, metorkosha, min maleta, min yabala, uh, the ashtray. In the ashtray, we had some, <laughs> you know, we had something. And the police officer said, oh, we're not, we're not concerned with that. We, we thought that if we acknowledged that, yeah, we just was puffing a little bit of a blunt or something like that. It, it, it would go well if that's the per point of them pulling us over. And he was like, no, 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 no. They was like, no, we're not looking for that. We're looking for guns. They wanted to find guns. So all we had basically was some some herbs. It was an herbs man running sort of a thing. So all they had herbs. So I'm not in the back seat. I'm actually in the back seat with the, <laughs> with the herbs, you could say, you know, um, with the evidence, right? Kind of hidden away and everything, not getting to all those details. Never know, we might have to use those techniques again, right? Mm. So don't want to be self-snitching, you know, and all snitching on I and I, as it were. But what happened was that they took us all out the car. They had us at different parts of the car. There was about four of them or so, right? There was three of us and about four or so of them. And they had us all separate. And they was asking us different questions. And, and I remember they asked me, they said, um, they asked, I, they said, um, like, like, who are these, you know, who, like, who are these other men? You know, I said, oh, these are my brethren. These are my brother. I said, brethren first. And he kind of got me, but it was almost like he didn't, he wasn't used to hearing that talk, that brethren talk. So I said, my, my brother, right? And also, I said, oh, oh, it's your brother. 
What's his name? <laughs> now, one of the brothers, one of the brothers, the, the brother that was nearest to where I was being held by the car, his name, right, or the name I knew him by, I knew his name, well, I didn't know his name, but I couldn't recall it under pressure, right, because he had, a, he had, a, the brother was from Panama, so, so, you know, we used to call him Panama, we used to call him Panama. Now, I did hear his name before. <laughs> it's this very day if I was to speak about him to a next brother who know who I'm talking about, I would say Panama. You know Panama? How's Panama doing? Panama, right? And so when the cop, the police officer, undercover asked, oh, that's your brother? Because I was like, yeah, that's my brother, man. My, my brother, you know? And he said, yeah, oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, that's your brother there. Yeah, that's your brother, right? Oh, what's your brother's name? And I looked over at him, right? Because he's being questioned, too, at the front part of the car. I'm near, like, the back part of the car and um I, I i immediately knew what was up i said oh shite oh shite i knew what was going on i said this is my brother right and this is your brother your brother your brother 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 remember we're, we're in the world not of the world but we have to know what goes on in the world right so in the world right when we say to somebody who's a gentile or heathen <laughs> or outside our order my brethren, we might have to explain if they're not biblical or whatnot like that in that old English language. Oh, that's my brother. And the first thing you say, this is my brother to someone, right? You both may have locks, be Rastafari, or my sister. The first thing that some Gentile-minded ones, he, you know, worldly-minded ones, non-Rastafari-minded ones, non-churchical-minded ones will say, oh, your brother, he's your brother. And then we might have to explain, like, our brother, like, you know, like in, in, in the Bible sense, you know, our brother in faith, our brother in spirit, our sister in faith, you know, on that level. So when the police officer said to me, what's your brother's name? And I think I did say, well, I know him as Panama. Oh, you don't even know your brother's name. You just know him as Panama. I think he did ask him about the other brother, the other brother, Brother Baruch, who I haven't spoken, another brother named Baruch. Baruch, actually, Baruch, right? Sorry about that, Baruch, who, that's one of my brother in, right? Now, now, and now, in the now time, but that was my brother in then, Baruch, right? Baruch, bless, you know, Baruch. But I know his name was Ricky, like Ricky, right? I know him as Ricky, Ricardo, I think, yeah, yeah. You know, but because of, even right now, while I'm talking about it, there's a little bit of doubt. Right? There's a little bit of doubt. I mean, doubt, not like I'm going around just doubting somebody, but there's a little bit of doubt there because I really don't know. Because what happened? They asked for our IDs. So they're looking at our IDs. Right? And they want to confirm our stories, our testimonies. Right? Now, we, we didn't collude, say, okay, we get caught, arrested. This is my. So what, what it was. That the point about the whole situation was that these are ones who I would call my brethren and were my brethren and are my brethren, you know, be my brethren. And in certain situations, I was, well, you know, I'm not to go, not to self snitch or whatever, but I'll be willing to fight or die, as it were, for my brethren. Yeah. And, and my brethren know that by some of the situation we had gone through before that and even after that, right? But I didn't even know their name. Like, you know, imagine you go to the hospital with somebody and say, this is my brother, this is my brother, and my brother. And they say, okay, what's his name? You want to call him? His? And, 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 and you're thinking like, oh, man, or you know him as a, you know him by a nickname. You know him as a nickname. And that brought to mind that that is, it was a true point. Even though Babylon is Babylon, Babylon still had a true point. Because if, the all, if everything's in the almighty power, the almighty control, and Babylon is the one so like ruling over or has a certain position, I know that the almighty... Right? The Almighty has to be involved in that somehow, either by um, um, imperative will, by commandment will, or by permissive will. Right? By permissive will. You know, whether it's something that you say, do this, or you see somebody doing something, and if you don't like them doing it, you allow it. But you know you can stop it anytime you want to stop it. Right? So that's the situation, and that's the case right there where I recognize that, yeah. Ain't this something? We be trotting around with brethren. I mean, ones we love, ones we do a lot of things with, experience a lot of things, have each other's so-called proverbially speaking back, you know, or, you know, to protect each other, so forth and so on, you know, and yet we only know each other. Sometimes the first time we get to find out this mind I've been rolling with for years name is, is when, or that government, even when we say that government name, that Babylonian name, but that's a name on the ID, 
You know what I'm saying? That's a name on their ID. So it's 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 a cognitive a cognitive dissonance. It's a cray cray. It's like a, it's irrational. It's it's not logical. It's illogical that we do this. All right, that we do this. I'm sure even the mob and the mafia, since a lot of black people idolize that and everything like that, because they organize, they get stuff done, they get paper, so forth and so on, right? That in, in even the mob that may call each other their buddies in their um um you know, you know, in their orders, not go through the mob order, you know, the conciliaries. I'm sure the conciliaries, <laughs> you know, the, the middle managers know who are the, who, you know who the ones in the street are they have their nicknames they have their nicknames that they call each other their code names they call each other but you don't think that they know each other's name their name name so whether somebody calls them by their nickname or calls them by their government name you think that the mob or some of these other ones that many of our people idolize and look up to and say we should be like them we should be like that and look how they take care of themselves look how they do for each other but look how they know each other's names you know, and I made a big point about that to the brother in that, you know, we really have to get out of that. You know what I mean? Because I was, that was like, it was like, that was a point that I had to acknowledge as being true, right? I had to acknowledge it being true. And also the good point about it is because my reaction caused the police after they, they just briefly looked through the car, right? Not to go into, in fact, he went into the area that we had it hidden, but he didn't go in the right way in the area. Let me put it like that. And because he didn't go the right way into the area, he he missed it. But like I said, they were looking for guns. Maybe they did find it. I don't know because, you know, the other cop was up there in the car and everything. We we're outside and everything like that. But that point, it just like threw me. It was it was like had me on the back foot. It had me on the back foot. I was like, whoa, it was like one of those matrix sort of things. You know, when when Neo got shot at and he and he had to like um do the Weibo, the Weibo move. He had to go back. You know, it was like it threw me back right there. Now, I mention all that because we as Rastafari and Rasta conscious youths, right, who was doing what we was doing, looking out for each other, so forth and so on, and on something, herb man, herb man, hustling, boom, 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 bright and early, way in the early hours of the morning and stuff like that, you know, we didn't even have the basics covered, right? We didn't have the, see, for myself, the name that I called myself and they knew me as Ross or Iodonis, right? It was on my ID. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they say, well, 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 Iodonis. And they look at the ID, they're going to see that there. Usually they, when they see Ross, Iodonis, Tafari, they usually just stop at Ross. So when I go some places, especially among the Gentiles or white folks, they'd be like, Ross, 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 Tafari. You know, everybody looks around and everything. But that's the name actually on my ID. <laughs> you know, and so if we're going to claim something, let's just go through. We, we still are in the world. Doesn't mean we have to be of it. You don't have to believe in the dollar bills, the promissory notes. But if you need to get something, buy something to save or help somebody out, doesn't the papers called dollar bills or whatever in your region, don't they matter? Are they still useful? All right. So getting to the paperwork, the paperwork was the main, the main point. Right, the paperwork. I said, "Wow, Bob Marley had had given this land. Rita had confirmed the gift. It seems right. Bob Marley gave it. Right, the Rastafari community, Nine Bingy, they knew it. Right. Later on, Rita confirmed it. Right. In the time of Rita, more was done on the land to build up the land. And as Ross Ivor was mentioned, you know, they put up a fence, a gate. You know, they built different compounds. They got like the water, the sewage, the water and I think electricity got certain conveniences, amenities of so-called modern life. They, they, they put in work. Sizzle Kalunji was said to have given certain monies towards helping the elders because a lot of elders. That's the point, too. It's, it's a community that has a lot of elders. I mean, you know, elders, right? And so when Muda started to ask all these questions about paperwork, <laughs> I began to laugh to myself and made a comment to um, Ishti, you know, Isha Shelley, to my, Isha, my wife, I began to say, yo, I said, it's interesting because people talk about the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, in the Bible this and the Bible that. 
right? And this shows like Muta in a sense to a degree touches on in different ways. You know, some ways that are agreeable, some ways that might not be agreeable, but sometimes you can't reach out and wake people up rationally or logically if they're not being logical. I'll repeat that. You cannot reach out to people with rationality and logics, generally speaking. The majority, if you're trying to wake up people with being rational and logical, most people are not rational and logical. <laughs> right? Most people are not rational and logical. Right? It's always like the person has a rational, logical argument. They bring you a rational, logical, and then when they bring it to you in a in a in a in a, in a, in a like, almost like a different way, that may even provoke your emotions your feelings right then it's like it kind of gets to your mind on a level if there's anything behind that that sort that, that seemed to be irrational in other words you almost have to put something that's rational or logical in the illogical bubble for most people to get it right for most people to get it but he's talking about paperwork and i'm like thinking like wow there is a problem with us as once lost, now found, black and brown <laughs> people, the sheep of the bite to Yisrael, royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. There is something wrong with us, right, as a people. I mean, that's nothing new right there, right, that we're reading the Bible. Like when we talk about the Bible, right, when we're teaching about the Bible, when the Lion of Judah Society is teaching the Bible, and we talk about the nine areas of people activity, that Ha Torah, Jah's direction, instruction, what Haile Selassie himself says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So in the theocratic government, Nyabingi order, should we glory? Should we not glory, right, in that which our head glories in, since Rastafari, Kedemawi Haile Selassie is the first Rastafari, and he is the Ras, right, of I and I Farai, right? In other words, he is the Tefari to I and I Farai. So in our relationship to the Rastafari, right, we are Farai, right? Ferry, like Faru, Yemi Farut, Yemi Farut, Hulu, right? Yemi Farut, all those who reverence, who fear, who respect, who reverence him, right? As we read in the Bible, it says all those who fear him, but the more correct and hard sense can be also in that word, right? Fara, right? To reverence, right? To respect, to have like a reverential trust, right, with a fear of evil or doing that which, right, would interrupt that good relationship. Like you love your father, you know your father loves you so much, so you want to do anything to, to make him think different or, or treat you differently, right? That kind of reverence, right? You know, that kind of respect, you know, not, not scary, scary, but, but respectful, right? Even if something wasn't your fault, right, but you could have done better, Right. It affects you because, you know, you want to plead with your father that, listen, it's my fault, but I, I, I didn't do it, but I should have been more watchful for it. But anyway, anyway, the paperwork, it comes down to the paperwork. And what I began to see and notice is that if we had been more diligent, right, with the real study of the Bible, according to the teaching of his majesty, we would not be in that situation. If we had been more diligent, right, to the teaching of his majesty, right, to the Bible. I mean, I was hearing one, I think, um, elder mother, my right, queen mother, she was talking about, oh, we don't deal with Sabbath, we're not deal with Sabbath, we're not deal with Sabbath, but we call ourselves Ethiopian. And we know Ethiopians historically, even as as Christian or Meshahawi and Messiahites or Christians, right? You know, the Judeo-Christian root, they dealt with Sabbath, both the Sabbath of the Yehudi, you know, the Ihud, right? The Sabbath, the Saturday Sabbath, and then that first day, right? We, we, we know this. We, we can learn this. This is very clear, right? So there's a lot of elders, right? There's a lot of elders on the land. And, and, and when she, she mentioned that, Right. When she mentioned that, I, I had to even ask my sister wife, I said, did she say Sabbath? Or she's talking about somebody named Sabbath. We're not dealing with Sabbath. You know, I'm hearing her, you know, saying a lot of things, right? And I know people say, well, that's the queen mother. That's the woman. That's the matriarch. That doesn't mean that everything that she's saying is correct. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, see, I know one's going to say, oh, you're against so, so forth and so on, so forth and so on. But no, I'm against that, which is against the teaching of the king. It's almost fanatical. 
so fanatical. We're talking about we chanting praises, Isis, right? A lot of the points of reference come from the Bible. We know how His Majesty speaks of the Bible. We know that His Majesty was not under white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, was Christianity, that this Christianity that they have given us from Rome, right, through the Protestants that's come to us in the Americas and the Caribbean, is not the same as the root of the faith in the Messiah, the faith, the Hebrew faith, and the and the anointed faith of the Messiah that we have witnessed historically and up to the time of His Majesty. We, we should already know that. We should already know that, right? We should, when we turn to Ethiopia, we looked at Ethiopia, and Ethiopia, at least at the time of the first Rastafari, Right? And the early ones in the Ethiopian Hebrew and the Federation movements, that the first ones, right, that during that particular time, they looked to Ethiopia, and Ethiopia still had the Black Christ, the Black Messiah, the Black Madonna. You know what I'm saying? The Black icons. So what you see today in Ethiopia is an apostasy of falling away. A lot of things have fallen away. Even we as Rastafari, Rastafari, I thought, I, I thought the Sabbath is, is, is important. Right? But then I heard her speak about the Sabbath. And I said, Chan, I don't want to think this way, but this is all part of this mix-up, mix-up. See, if we really were studying the scripts, you know, we really were studying the Bible and applying the principles, having the Holy Spirit, the, the true Ila Irit, right? we would have had a contract. We would have had a covenant. We would have something that's a contractual. The Bible speaks about this all throughout. People be reading the Bible, looking at all this religious stuff. You know, about, you know, going to heaven after you die and being with, as they say, Jesus or this or that, the pie in the sky, all, all those kind of things. They're living their whole life to die and to go off to be with Jesus in the sky in heaven somewhere when even the Bible don't talk about going to heaven. The Bible don't talk about going to heaven. The Bible talk about us bringing heaven or that perfect, that idealized state that we receive, right, from our heavenly father, like right? manifesting on earth, our father prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? And we're not talking about out in space, out of space, right? It's our using word sound, right? You know, like we, as Rastafari, as black people, we use word sound, right? In a literal sense, and we use some words in a figurative sense. And many times we use words in a figurative sense that if you take it in a literal sense, it loses all meaning. This is the same sense of the going to heaven, or not even the going to heaven, but the whole heaven idea. I, I know we're speaking on that there, the, but the main thing is that one's not really reading and studying Torah. If we were studying Torah, when I told Torah, judged that from Torah to Torah, from the Torah of Moshe to the Torah of Yesus Christ, of Yeshua, right? According to the teaching of his majesty. Ethiopia built itself up, right? Historically over the, the, the centuries and the millennia, Right, based on not just reading the Bible or being faithful to whether the Judaic, the Hebrew Old Testament, or later on to the New Testament, but implementing the principles not in a religious way, right, but in a logical way, in a real way, right. The fit and the guest, the fit and the guest speaks on this applicable way. Right? It doesn't mean that we have to know everything before we can do anything. But a situation like this where somebody gives you a land or you have land and you have no documentation. Now, I want to say, well, the word of Rastafari should be good enough. I agree with you in the idealized state, right? You know, as though we had already manifested the fullness of the victory. We got the victory, but we have to manifest the fullness of the victory. And that can only happen by giving us the teaching of his majesty, not based on your favorite elders, because, you know, whether whether they're man or they're woman, patriarch or matriarchs, you know what I mean? Because of the white patriarchy, it's like the black man don't know of the true black man patriarchy. Don't don't you see? Can't you not witness, behold, Adamawi Hala Selassie and see that point of reference to the true patriarchy? Can we not see Ethiopia 3,600 years, right, of, we could say, that freeness, that, 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 that Israelite, King, that real Israel, I want to say like that, when I say real Israel, I'm talking about before 1948, we still have thousands of years of that manifestation, right? Before others took certain symbology, we have the Ethiopia manifestation of things, right? The Israelites, as I like to call them, the Israelites of Ethiopia, right? The Israelites of Ethiopia, because we have peoples coming together, 
right? But how are all these different peoples to come together unless there is some law? We talk about we have no king but the king of kings. Well, therefore, need we quote what the king of kings says concerning true Right, the true religion, true faith is true manifestation. I mean, for us as Rastafari, you see, for us as Rastafari, because we're calling on, we're not saying we're just Ethiopians, because there's many different Ethiopians, you know, different, different. Some Ethiopians, of course, are Orthodox, some Ethiopians are, are Judaic, Hebraic, some are Islamic, some are animist, some have, have, have their customary tribal, ancient, ancestral religions of other types, right? But what kept Ethiopia, even though it had a Judeo-Christian, we could say, rulership, right? Um, what kept it all together that even people who were not of the faith of the rulers were loyal to the rulers? It was not like in white man system where people had to be beat down and kind of like, you know, you had to beat them in submission. No, many of them willingly, right? Muslims sometimes fought right alongside the ethiopian christians against outside muslims that are being funded by like the turks the ottoman turks i mean we have this historically speaking right what made them join with the judeo-christian rules of ethiopia what made them abide under this system of things for nearly three thousand years right it's the bible Right? When I say the Bible, it's 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 the living principles. This is something that's a hundred and and eighty degree of counterfeit Christianity, white Christianity, something that's a hundred and eighty degrees different. Right? It's opposite. So what happens that when we talk about Christ and Bible, a lot of us has to like go through like what they call it, like um we have Stockholm syndrome. Right. Unconscious Stockholm syndrome, because when we see certain things and somebody talk about the Bible, we talk about what white man did, what white man did. Well, sometimes people are talking about like putting a black face right on white man's Christianity. We're not speaking about that. The Ethiopians, the Israelites of Ethiopia, the Israelites of Eth the Israelites of Ethiopia didn't do that. Right. They, they didn't do that. Right. They didn't do that. So what we have is like one book <laughs> read two diametrically different ways, right? You know, it's like one book, right, read and taken in two different ways, with two different kind of mind, two different kind of souls, if we can say, right? Two different kind of psyches, two different kind of minds. And so the Ethiopia, Haile Selassie example, 3,600, 3,600 year old example, uh, Judeo-Christian example, is our example. But somehow over the last 30, 40 or so years, and we can say this from our own witness, right, as a Rastafari, we've seen it fall off. We've seen it fall off. Once we go after every other thing, other than the real teaching of his majesty, the principal teaching of his majesty. And when we say Rastafari, right, and we know that Ras means head, right, and we relate to ourselves as far I, it should be obvious, right, that the, that the body without the head is no better than Duppy, right? Anything can happen. Any number can play. And this is the situation that we're witnessing here with the whole, um, 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 uh, Scott's past, right, and regarding the elders, right, and you know, and um, yeah, because it, it seems like, like ones and ones, even amongst us as Rastafari, and I begin to see what Muta was talking about on a certain level, there's like this kind of religious, it's like a spookism on a certain level, right, and of course, if you say that, ones get offended, it's almost as though we, we still are half original. What I mean by half original, right? We have embraced Haile Selassie in Ethiopia, right, halfway. But already because we already had this other download, so to speak, right, in us from our Western Gentile, you know, experience before we came to light of Rastafari. People say I was born, you know, like Rasta from birth and all that. That sounds nice. And that's almost like I say, well, I don't have no responsibility to grow in grace and the knowledge. I already know everything. See, and it's that sort of attitude that leads to sort of things like this. I mean, not having any contract. Remember when even Abra um, Abraham made covenants with ones, even in the Bible, they showed us the principle of bearing le a legality, law. Ooh, ooh, why we think when we look at Torah, 
Torah is usually referred to as law, but really it's direction, instruction, and not just in religious ways. Some people look at the Bible as being just a religious book, and that is the problem, or some spooky, spiritual, out of space. That's the problem. They don't look at it in the practical, applicative terms. All right? We find that we have to look at the Bible more from a Hebrew or a Judaic perspective. Right? I'm talking about the Israelites of Ethiopia, Judaic perspective. I'm talking about like a black Hebrew, we the black Jews perspective. Not just as black Jews who say they're black Jews and don't really link with those who are practicing this even while we were lost in captivity. You see, there's some of our people who want to come out of being lost in captivity and make up their own things and say, this is the original thing. What we do is we look at those manuscripts. We look at the evidence, right? And some things that happen in modern Judaism that they do religiously, not religiously, but, you know, in the faith, the practice, the liberty and everything, agree. They agree and they reflect what the Bible says. And then we find points of witness. In other words, some things that are, are done in modern day Judaism, Right. Are the same things that we can find historical testimony of in Ethiopia, among the Israelites of Ethiopia and elsewhere. And also the Bible witnesses it. Right. While there's other things right, that the Bible does not give any witness to or, or, or confirmation. Right. But it's just traditions that have come in right later on with other people into this way of life. I'm mentioning all that because there's ways to sort it. We can sort it. Right? But there seem to be a lot of um, irrational self interest, you know, uh, the individualism versus the collectivism. I know Bundaism, but the individual, right? The I, 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 right? And we say, I, I, man, I, I, this, I, that. But His Majesty speaks about we, right? Yes, we say I and I, right? But until the I of I and I dissolves in the I of the Most High, the Most I manifests in His Word and walked out in I and I liberty. We don't walk it out. There's no good people talking about love, 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 right? People talk about love, right? More than the Bible talks about love among the holy, the faithful people, right? You know, and, and they think that love can just just talk of love. Love, love, you know what love would be? Love would be getting and having some paperwork. That would be love. That would be love, right? Because if somebody had some paperwork secretly and had it signed or whatever, and now this crisis comes up, right? And one's a one, are the, the, the Scots past, Rastafari, Naya Bingi order going to be evicted from this land? Is what's going to happen? And somebody finds that and it's legitimate, right? And they say, well, I did this out of love, right? You know what? It'll be a lot of love for that person or those people that, that have that document that would just settle this whole thing. That'll be a lot of love, right? That would be a wonderful thing because it seems like right now, as, as Ross Ivy, right, said, they're waiting, they're waiting to see what happens next. I said, Chad. Ain't that something? They're waiting to see what happens next. We're waiting also to see what happens next right here. But we have to, the teaching of his majesty, you know, a lot of ones turn their backs on the Bible, got wrong views about the Bible, right? And yes, we do have to go in on Roman, Western, whitewashed Christianity. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have to study these things. We got enough ones. We should have enough ones in our community. Right, that through their study, their research can provide some of the basics that we can really begin to sort out and put into effect. Right, because also we have a little generation gap too. Because a lot of the youths, right, a lot of the youths can see some of these things because they already witness, you know, like we to our parents. Many of our parents was in Rastafari, right, overtly and everything, and they did other things. Right. Many of them. But we now see Rastafari and we can sometimes see the best, the good things they did and the bad things. Right. That's the same thing for youth. And to many of these elders, I and I is like a youth by comparison. Right. Even though to many of the youths, we are sort of like an elder so forth and so on. Right. And I'm saying that the Torah teaching, the reading, the feeding, this is an object lesson. This is an object lesson of why we do what we do, brothers and sisters. Right. This is an object lesson. Right? There's, there's other matters concerning this subject matter that we would like to address, right? but we would like to do that elsewhere. We briefly addressed it here, but the main point is about the paperwork. 
right? The paperwork, the paperwork, right? And this is the whole point about our our miseducation in WASP Christianity and white Anglo-Saxon and whitewash Christianity has caused us to miss out on those things that many other communities, look at the white, the European Jews, right? The European Jews know this, even some of the white Christians know this, right? Others know this. And then if I tell you that, well, actually this book called the Bible originally come out of the experience of black people. And now when we look at the Bible, all we engaging in is some story of the pie in the sky after you die, right? And what a bad world it is. And what can we do? We got to wait for Jesus to come so forth and so on. You know what I mean? And yet we can't even do, or we don't do business right, right? We don't recognize the significance of the paperwork, Right. Or then we're going to say it's all Babylon. Right. Paperwork and government having president, having order and structure. Somebody can become a dictator. Yeah. Somebody can become a dictator. But the, the dictator doesn't have to only be a man. <laughs> Over what I'm saying. A dictator doesn't always have to be the male. <laughs> you know, what I mean, in reality. Right. In reality. Right. But right here, brothers and sisters, let us. um you know, um, I say pray, you know, watch and pray, you know what I mean? I mean, in the true meaning of pray, don't have time to go into the details right here, you know, but let's, let's, let's seek the best, you know, let's seek the best and the blessed, but let's learn from this situation. Let this be an object lesson. This should really, really, really be an object lesson to us that the Torah, I'm talking about Torah. The Torah is just the whole thing, right? From Torah to Torah is how we say the Torah of Moses, the Torah of Yeshua, from the law of Moses to the law of Yeshua, right? I mean, we're speaking about real world application. I mean, the whole thing applies when you're forgiven from your sins. Your sin is the uckery, right? The foolishness, the fornication, the crown of the king. You're not doing things rightly, right? And it doesn't seem as though those in the tabernacle, we say Nyabingi order, tabernacle, churchical order, right? And you done know, for my part, I glory in the Bible, the teaching of his majesty. And we can't recognize that we didn't do things right by not having any witness testimony. I could show you more things in the scripture that talks about, you know, the testimony document, what was the equivalent of paperwork, of evidence. You're going to buy something, you're going to purchase something. You got to have that paperwork, that document. And we have to begin to do that amongst us as Rastafari. That shows that we are Rastafari of good faith when we do draft up contract, contractual agreement. This is something that is, that is thousands of years old. We can show it throughout the scripture. We talk about a covenant, a contract. It isn't just a covenant with God, pie in the sky. If you, it's not just a covenant of God on some of those loopy, Gentile, whitewash, heathen Christian ideas, right? Or idea, idolatries, right? It's in practicality. It's in practicality. You know, in the Torah, what made things either like um, sinful, as they call it in English, sinful. Really, we call it fukuri fornication of the crown of the king, right? Is business thing. Is business. Is business. Almost almost a quarter to maybe more than a quarter of what the Torah of Moshe speaks about to this new nation, this new people, is the basic precepts and principle of good business. Of good business. If a man lends me an ox to plow my land, the ox dies on me, and I say, yo, brother, your ox died on me, right? And then maybe I overworked it. Maybe I did something, right? But I figured like, hey, bro, I'm so sorry your ox died on me. And it's proven the ox was healthy. I have to replace his ox. If I don't replace his ox, I'm considered a sinner, an ocker. If I do bad business with my brother, Right. You know, I, I say this is yours now. And then later on, I say it's not. But see, the whole thing about hearsay, because the Bob Marley thing has been brought into the, the, the mix. Right. And many can testify to that. That shows that it was already given from prior time and what Rita was doing being a caretaker. But, because, but now it is said that she can't speak or walk. Right. And now it's other members of the family. Right. I've been hearing a lot of talk about the different Marleys, but there's a woman 
This reminds me of the thing that happened with um, Nzinga King, right? Everybody was talking about the police, the police, the police, the police. When I found out it was a police woman that did this to a uh, Rastafari woman, a young girl, young lady, young woman, I said, wow, I said, woman to woman is so unjust, children. See, a lot of sisters, daughters, mothers and wives, you know, they might not like that. Some of them might not. I don't think that they're rightly thinking because the fact is, woman to woman will tell you that sometimes woman to woman are so unjust. But here we see an example of it, but nobody wanted to mention it because nobody wanted to go against a woman, police officer. You see what I'm saying? You know, that was the main point. That was the main point. It was a police man that did this. How can a man, what kind of man, police man would do this? Man, don't do that to no younger. But what kind of woman would do this to another woman? Now, we already know about sometimes women have their jealousies, their so-called cat fighting, so forth. You know, you know, just like people, other people known as men do as well. The same thing is going on right here. Because it seems as though, though there's, a, there's Rita Marley, right? And then there is this Stephan, uh, not Stephan, um, Stephanie or somebody, I think, who is involved in this. Right? But it's only really do I hear their names come up. Nobody's really speaking to them. They seem to be on the tip of the spear of this questionable action that's going on. But this should be an object lesson for us right? to do the king's business. Because if we are of the king, if we say we are the king's, the, you know, the king's man and woman and woman them, then we're going to have to do things the way of the king. Right? People say we have no king, but, but you know, but Haile Selassie. Okay. And so, therefore, we can't have a, any government. In other words, nobody can be in charge in a limited capacity of this or that. Then we're never going to get nowhere. His Majesty already speaks opposite of that. His Majesty speaks about good leadership. You know, what the qualification of good leadership, right? And how anybody who's a leader have to first apply these principles to themselves. So it means that when people say, some Rasta say, well, only leader we have is Haile Selassie, that contradicts His Majesty's teaching. His Majesty speaks about leadership. So I'm saying it's things like that, that some who I think are lazy, Right, because they get used to the way they are. Maybe, maybe because they are elders. Right, now I, I do understand this, and this is not harping against elders, because many elders who who agree with what I am saying here. Right, of course, there's some that don't, because maybe what I'm saying puts you in the crosshairs. You know what I mean? And some of them are not. Are these elders because they're old? Because they got gray hairs? I mean, even the the scripture puts a qualification on who are elders and elders indeed. Right? They are witnessed and testified to, you know what I mean? And we shouldn't be just caping, you know, for a man because he's a man or for a woman because she's a woman or a man because he's just an old man, right? Or a woman because she's an old woman. We have to really start to look at what's right and what's wrong, right? And not have this kind of, um, this kind of really, um, mm, this is a bad situation that's going on. You know what I mean? But basically what can solve this is give, give us a teaching of his majesty. Let's do things Haile Selassie way. You know, according to the teaching of his majesty, the L-O-J way. Let's do things the Lion of Judah way, right? Even the Lion of Judah society where ones will be better informed, right? It doesn't mean that we'll be living the Old Testament again, but we can learn from the mistakes of the past and apply the principle as other mature communities that point to this Bible do. There are mature communities. One of them I'll put there is the Jews, white and black, because uh, most of you know about the white ones, but so I say white first and black that apply these principles and are very prosperous, successful, right, at what they do, right? You know what I mean? And not just applying like having a contract because I'm dealing with a white boy or a white girl or somebody from another nation. Have a contract while I'm dealing with my fellow black men. And this is one of the most difficult things, right, when you really try to say, yeah, bro, I agree with you. Let's do this. Well, I'm, I'm going to drop a little contract. Well, I, I, I and I, we don't need no contract. You know, the I know I, I and I just trust one another because we're Rastafari, Selassie, I know this, blah, 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 blah. You, you see, and that's, that's the problem. That's the problematic area, right? Um, but verify. Trust, but verify. Trust, but verify, right? When I'm reasoning, negotiating for mine, and when I agree on this sort of business to pursue, right? And I say, yeah, let's go into business. And then I say, let's have a contract. Let's put what we agree to on paper, right? See, see that's the difference there. 
right? That shows us how fallen away from who we are as Bait Yisra, as the Beta Israel, right? The once lost, now found, black and brown sheep of the Beta Israel. That shows how far we've fallen, that we don't have time to argue about white supremacy in the Bible instead of looking at this, this book in its workable ways in communities like the Israelites of Ethiopia or even among some of the latter-day, you know, Jews, Right, who have used and still use this as a principal point of reference. This is why you don't see these sort of things rise up. Even historically in Ethiopia, you don't hear about these sort of things rise up without a proper and a righteous just resolution. And even the Prophet Muhammad said that the Ethiopians were the most honest of people. And he was saying this at a time when Ethiopia was deeply right into Judeo-Christian, you could say, liberty not just going to church on Sunday or whatever, but living this out and, and her laws reflecting a well-digested understanding of the Bible in reality. Not a, not a religious thing, right? But a practical application, right, of the word, right? And that led to peace, right? You know, I, I mean, that led to all those testimonies when white man first went to Ethiopia. He's like, I just like open the Bible. I felt like it's open the book of the Bible. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking through, through the Bible. I went through a time machine, right? You know, this is the reason why we see all those early testimonies because they had like, like, like burning spear said, like burning spear said, the, the Ethiopians live it out. In fact, to Muda Baruka, share this word Muda Baruka for Burning Spear. Can you do Lion of Judah, do I and I a song, Ras Ayadonis, Yadin, Yadin Action, do a song for I and I. Nobody remembers Dr. Malaku, Dr. Malaku, Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. I think your voice, Brother Burning Spear, will be ideal. My ideal on it, you know, Malaku Bayan. This is the one that is Matthew sent. The name Malaku means his angel, his angel. Right, his messenger, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. So a tune like nobody remembers. Oh, oh Mar uh, Marcus Garvey, you know what I mean? Nobody remembers Dr. Malaku. Right, first we're offering up here, and if any of the I them musicians do any tunes, check us out at lojs.org. Send us a tune and give us permission to share that on our platform and, pro and podcast. Check out the links in the description as well. Also, the contact links. Yes, I, Rastafari, give thanks, brothers and sisters. Be safe out there and have shalom peace in your spirit, in your psychology, your soul, and in your wealth and your health, your health and your wealth. Yes, I. So be healthy, right? Be healthy, be safe, brothers and sisters. Shalom, chabarim. Shalom. Yes, I. Rastafari. Kedemar, Hadassalasi, Miskin.